Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well and today we're going to talk about some of the earnings that have so far come out with this uh, crazy week that we're having with the stock market and the earnings that are happening. Such a crazy week with so many companies reporting earnings and yeah, it's already getting a bit crazy and I thought I'd kind of, with the up-to-date ones that we have, kind of recap some of the biggest movers and some of the really interesting ones and some quick thoughts on their earnings. There's a few companies that I still haven't gone through these earnings calls yet because obviously, you know, a bit of time to go through them, listen to them all and everything like that, but I will do. Uh, but my first reaction to some of these earnings that have come out recently so if you could smash the like button if you are new here maybe subscribe i am recording this on tuesday at i think half past seven so by the time this video probably goes up we probably have the next batch well this batch um here apple facebook qualcomm for teledoc logitech this next batch will be minutes away from being launched so then you'll have these and we might talk about these a little bit but today we're going to talk about these guys on the Tuesday open uh, the Tuesday after the close and this morning the ones that have come out this morning as well and um, so yeah we're going to go through that just to let you know if you do want to join the patreon links in the description we did um, a little bit of a live stream on there and um, talking about the Tesla earnings and cash piles and on Friday we're actually going to be um, talking about ETFs and we're also going to be talking about how to decide how uh, what size a position should take up in a portfolio when you start buying um, so yeah we're going to be covering that on Friday I believe on the Patreon anyway if you do want to join that but we'll get stuck onto this earnings that we have had so far the only ones I'm not going to mention are Visa because they kind of um, the stock price didn't really react too much of them I don't think Starbucks did uh, much uh, off their earnings and Boeing pretty much once again you know um, they pretty much came out with the same pretty much pre press release that we, we've seen so long which is yeah it's just a horrible quarter and everyone knows that and uh, it will be a while until they can kick on but they did say they think that 2021 might be that kicking on point which I think they've got to say really you know I couldn't if Boeing came out and said oh yeah it's just another write off year then I think that might have sunk the pre share price a little bit but a few of the ones will go through here so First of all, we're going to start off with uh, one that happened on Tuesday morning, which is UPS, and th these guys had a massive jump. Obviously, um, they've had a strong uh, period, a lot with the e-commerce side of it as well. Um, obviously, it was one that I actually said on um, the kind of like preview going into this week, which I said, UPS, I expect really good numbers from, because as well as that, you kind of see in FedEx, you know, this is why it's always good to check out companies that are very similar to yours and their earnings. Is because you get good ideas of how well your company is going um, and UPS if you're a FedEx shareholder UPS you know you'd have got okay FedEx put stronger numbers UPS should put strong numbers in and even though they like the competition because um, of the industry they're in you know people you can just tell that parcels are being sent a lot more and obviously UPS really benefited from that one and um, so yeah something that I just point, thought I'd point out there this one was really interesting AMD and um, AMD absolutely special numbers we'll have a quick flip through in a second but they actually went up higher um, and then the the stock totally reversed all the gains it had back down at $84 this is one that I'm going to definitely try get through I know I keep saying this but this time it's one I'm trying to get through because they put really incredible numbers out but the stock pretty much gave a lot of them gains back again so yeah I need to have a look at this one uh, but it's you know it's not like it's even at a crazy valuation it's like a 35p ratio but if we do have a quick look at the numbers you can see you know the EPS was an absolute beat well, this is the one, one thing that I was like well um, revenue uh, 92 percent year over year which is fantastic and as well as that you know it's a, it's a triple beat you got an EPS beat you had a revenue beat and then also it raised um it raised its guidance as well um, so yeah for Q2 uh, AMD guide revenue of uh, 3.6 billion uh, the consensus was 3.2 billion so yeah a, a triple beat um, so I don't know how this stock managed to reverse because everything that was there was pretty impressive from that point of view so yeah AMD um, yeah re looked like really strong earnings and I'm surprised to see a reversal like that really strange movement but yeah um, looked like really good numbers once again so I definitely need to have a look into that one and um, Microsoft um, these guys actually put in really good earnings, uh, but I, this could have been on the list where I just didn't talk about it, but I felt like I could. You know, Microsoft is a position that I own. It was my biggest position in the stock portfolio through, I believe, 2017, 2018, 2019, and even 2020 um, until Facebook took it over. So for a long time, this has been my favorite company. Um, I, I haven't bought any shares for a while, uh, but yeah, the valuation is a lot higher, but these guys actually pulled out some fantastic numbers. Um, and this, I think this reason why this one didn't go up because it, you know, for Microsoft, you know, a trillion dollar company to still bringing out 20% as well. Um, 
year over year revenue um, really good beat on the EPS side of it as well um, I think it's just that it's just priced quite high to perfection now and that's probably the one reason why that didn't move but these guys did put in really good earnings so I thought it was worth a shout out um, and phase so this is one that I said that if I was to consider a solar plate could be these guys they do trade at a little rich valuation but it's really easy to see why because you look at solar energy it's only early stages you know it's definitely going to come a lot more mainstream especially under a biden government over the next kind of uh, few years as well and yeah um once again i, I don't have a hundred percent reason why uh, why this totally went down but um yeah um 29 percent down i think the guidance actually was the reason why uh, but when we actually went on to the uh, numbers um it was an epsb revenue putting 46 percent uh year over year growth um, and yeah I think that really um, you know you hear guides revenues of 300 million to 320 million and the consensus was just a little higher on the top end side of it and yeah I think it was just the guidance they might have realized okay we can't beat that number so let's bring it down so we beat it you know pro more than realistic they will hit that but they want to like look oh look we beat it um, so yeah just really overall looks pretty good and they just guided a bit lower you know sometimes you do have to do that lower uh, do that sometimes and maybe that's the reason why the stock got spooked but once again like amd m phase is definitely one i need to look into because you know i think it would be good to have a solar play in the portfolio because they should do quite well in the next few years these guys google um really good earnings i still can't believe uh this this company i think like facebook as well like i've always said like i love amazon uh amazon facebook google and Facebook and Google, their valuations have always been regarded as ridiculously cheap. Well, from what I've always said, because um, you look at them and like the what they have is absolutely amazing. Facebook's amazing, Google's amazing, and I think people disrespect it because when you think about you getting a, a good advertising platform and YouTube. YouTube's like such a fast-growing platform. And I think if YouTube was a stock, you know, I think it would trade at like a crazy valuation. And uh, I don't know why it doesn't, you know, to have a platform like a major streaming service like that, that's just going to grow huge. Um, a P ratio is fair. It was just, you know, just crazy. But yeah, these guys put in uh, really good revenues jumping at uh, 34%. And normally these guys, I think, uh, normally put in like 20%, I think, revenue growth. So yeah, obviously the kind of work at home kind of thing is still a little bit in there, but yeah, still, still pretty good numbers. Um, and yeah, I think this is, you know, here we go. You can see here, YouTube ads um, up 48%. Like, if you, you just compare that to something like a Netflix, if YouTube was a stock and on its own, uh, you know, you only have to look at something like a Netflix. You, you would trade at a ridiculous valuation, but then you look at all of the other segments that are in this company, 30%, 30%. Uh, Google over 46%, Google Cloud up 45%. Um, yeah, this is actually, yeah, funny enough, I was one of my big decisions that I had earlier this year was if I buy Amazon or Google, and I actually bought Amazon, uh, but then some of you guys might remember, I actually started a portfolio off at the start of the year for like a family member, and I said, oh, Google's one that you want to own. And I told them to buy Google, and for some reason I never bought it myself, I just bought Amazon. It's probably a decision that I regret a little bit now because it has done amazing and it's just been, even now, like, I still think when you look at, you get in a, like, a platform like, like YouTube, a 30p ratio, and I think YouTube still has plenty of legs in the next kind of few years as well. You know, you only have to look at the valuation as well, what a, a streaming service like Netflix is at. Um, and yeah, crazy. Um, but yeah, onto one company that I own, one of my biggest positions actually right now, which is Shopify. And they had, a, a, the, for me, this is the pick of the bunch. These guys' earnings were 10 out of 10. I mean, Google's were very, very good. Uh, but Shopify, I think, were just slightly better. I was I was shocked when I saw these numbers. I went, wow, this is this is unbelievable. And uh, no wonder that, you know, the stock went up a little bit and then it even shot up a bit more after that. You know, we're up 11%. Still crazy that it's at 158 billion market cap company. I still think this has a lot of room to go. And generally, like I've said previously on the channel about Shopify, you know, you look at Amazon. Yeah, Amazon gives the customers to sellers, but it's just so competitive. You know, when you can go on a site like Shopify and have your, your fulfillment done for you, your storage, uh, advertising, edit your own website, have some more loyalty there. It's just a comp it's like, such a better step for sellers and it's not even like the small sellers like you know the big sellers as well can come use this site and it just 
I can only see uh, further down the line where the majority of e-commerce uh, sellers are using Shopify site and I think this has just got so much room and this is why I should have bought it years ago when I still hovered over the fat valuation and eventually I got to the point where I was like okay it's on a slight dip um, when I say slight dip it was literally I don't know um, I think like 10% maybe, maybe not even that. And I was like, just I'm just gonna buy it. <laughs> I'm just gonna buy it because sometimes there's a point where you go, if it's a great company and it's gonna be massive over the next few years, just buy it. If you're, if you're a long-term investor, you can afford to just buy it and hold. And that's exactly what I'm doing with Shopify. You know, my average is like 1,000, maybe 1,080 or something. Um, and yeah, I'm just happy to hold that because I think it's, a company that's just going to dominate for the next few years uh, and you just look at the num the numbers were just mind-blowing I mean look at this if this EP EPS beat um, Q1 non gap EPS of two dollars and one cents beating by one dollar twenty six that is it is another different level of EPS beat is that that is I've not seen an EPS beat like that for a while <laughs> it is very very good and this I always said I made this argument um, Back when I was buying it, I said, people don't realize is like, yeah, the valuation's a little high, but Shopify has now scaled to a point where the, bro the, pro the profitability is gonna be hugely growing, and that's what's happening, and it will carry on growing at a good rate. And um, with it going at a good rate, you know, you're gonna see the valuation drop. And same on the revenue side of it, I thought we would see a lot more slowdown than this, because um, we're in Q1, everything's kind of opening up, Q1's on its weakest quarter, and then it goes, puts nearly, uh, revenue of a billion in in a quarter, which is is pretty impressive. Uh, Hundred and ten percent year over year growth, <laughs> with crazy amounts, uh, and yeah, beat by one hundred and twenty nine million. I mean, this this this. If you want, if you ever want me to give you an example of ten out of ten earnings, go look at Shopify. The crazy, crazy. And sometimes the one that I get mixed up with Shopify is Spotify. Just because they sound very same. Sometimes I say Shopify instead of Spotify. Uh, I might have even done it a few minutes ago and I might not have even realised. <laughs> but yeah, Spotify um, down on 11% dip. I've just realised I've not actually put one company on this list. But um, yeah, um, Spotify um, down 11%. For me, I still can't buy this. I think the user growth was weak, which was always going to happen when you're kind of coming out of the CV period. I think a few stocks like this are going to have a little bit of a wake up call where they, they come down a little bit in value. Um, I got asked earlier today if I would buy this one. Uh, personally, I won't just because I feel like the moat's quite small. Um, and I just think there's, in my opinion, like Spotify, I, you know what, I love the product, I think it's a great product. I think this company, the stock will still quite do quite well. But the valuation it's at and the moat it does have, I just think like, you know, the companies I can go and buy instead of this, I just think are better opportunities. But um, if you were interested in this one, you know, you got a 20% dip, it's not terrible. Uh, and I realized that I missed one off this list, which is Pins, Pinstock, Pinterest. So yeah, I sh this one I probably shouldn't have remembered really because it's down so much. So Pinterest down 14% right now. Um, so I used to be quite a big shareholder in Pinterest, but I've over the course of the last kind of six months really, I've actually started selling off. I sold off like half my position. Um, I sold all of my trading to 212 position which I made over 200% on and then uh, my Jira one I sold something like 10 to 20% of that position off. It looks quite good now because obviously yeah uh, it's coming down but it's coming down now to the point where I'm actually like I'm considering maybe buying some. Uh, obviously the highs are like $89 we're on down a uh, I don't even know if that's got the uh, actual share price. Yeah, it has uh, down just around about 20%. I mean, if you could give this company in like the $50 range, it could be tempting for me to buy this. We'll see what happens. But yeah, these guys, these guys fell very much like Spotify, fell on very weak user growth. But the actual, if I can actually, I should have got this. This is one I missed off it, so I haven't got it up. But if you actually look at what they did, it was really impressive. Um, can I go on that one yeah so you look at here they're now profitable beat beat on EPS um, revenue 78% uh, year over year um, and I don't know if it didn't have it here but I, I believe in guidance they actually uh, guided for like a hundred percent revenue growth 
and they were kind of like, oh, uh, monthly average users missed. Very much like Spotify. But the thing is with a lot of these monthly active users, like they're, they're always gonna crease in CV. You've gotta look past that and now I think, are they going to monetize them um, and make more revenue from it? And you can see like the guidance that uh, Pinterest gave, you can see like they're looking and thinking our revenue growth off these users now is gonna be amazing. And people are, are not realizing, um, Pinterest sold off today and Pinterest should have gone up on the earnings. You know, that's what should have happened on this company because people aren't realizing this company has more users now. And when the more users are going to advertise people, and also they don't realize the um, how uh, much growth still left in the Europe side of it. Like, um, if you ever look at the rate that they charge on advertisements on Europe compared to US, and how quick the Europe side of the company is growing, it's huge. And with that, the growth and then the profit that will come in, the revenue that will come in. People are sleeping on um, on that. People aren't realizing, and the stock went down on monthly active users, and people and Wall Street totally missed what they should have been looking at. They shouldn't have looked at monthly active users on this one. You know, they're, they're always monthly active users was always going to be a bit bumpy because of the last twelve months. What they aren't realizing is how much that Europe side of the company is growing and how much potential they have, and that's why I believe they don't even say it here. I wonder if there's an article on it. But I believe it was a hundred and hundred and ten percent guidance they put in. Uh, just see if it's somewhere. Somewhere scrolls down here. I don't think it does say it. Well, it says here that international rev- revenues grow one hundred and seventy percent, and that's what I mean by uh, the, the EU side of the company growing. And yeah, if you look at the guidance, it was actually pretty good, and it should have gone up really, but. You know, that's why I'm considering even right now, I'm thinking, okay, I could buy this one at these sort of prices if it stays around here because people are missing out on that. Um, so yeah, um, I'm very happy that it looks like a, I made a good decision to sell like half of my Pinterest position, uh, but now it's kind of coming back a little bit. I'm kind of considering buying in. So um, um, yeah, I'm watching it. I'm watching it. We'll see what happens. I'll go through the full earnings for sure um, and then I'll go from there. But this is definitely an interesting one for me right now. But I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope um, we have some good earnings again tonight. But if you enjoyed it, smash the like button. If you are new, subscribe. Um, and maybe tomorrow we'll just go through some of the earnings again. Uh, by the time uh, they come out, you guys probably watching this know what happens. But maybe go through some of them as well. But yeah, hope you enjoyed it anyway, guys. And I'll see you in the next one.